Welcome to Bayside Apostolic Center, where faith meets community and hearts are transformed. Located in the heart of Torrance, our church is more than just a place of worship. It's a family. Let's all stand together. We're going to get started. Amen. Good to be here tonight on a Wednesday night. Yeah, if they'll get that music for us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Amen. Uh, what a time we had on Sunday. Amen. Uh, closed out our revival. Just a powerful move. And then last night in our prayer time, just a, a powerful move of God uh, here here in the building. And I, I, I know uh, it was throughout everybody that was on. It was just a powerful, powerful time. And so tonight we're gathered together again. Amen. And you know what, God? God has taken us. Amen. Along the way. And if you'll, if you'll stay close and follow, amen, you'll be able to see the great things that God is doing. Amen. Why don't you lift your hands with me as the praise team comes. Amen. Let's invite him into this place. God, we're coming to you. We love you and appreciate you. We're thankful and grateful for this opportunity. Lord, to worship together, God, to hear your word tonight, God. We're thankful, Lord, for all that you have done. But we're looking forward, God, to what you're going to do next and what you're going to accomplish, God, in us and through us. And, Lord, God, what you're going to do through the church, Lord God. We're excited, God, hallelujah, about what is going on in you, Lord Jesus. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together with the praise team. Amen. Amen. Psalms 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Yes. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Uh -huh. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. That's right. We are his people and yes. the sheep of his Amen. pasture. Amen. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with yes. praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Amen. Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord today. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you glory. We give, we give you all the honor and all the praise today, Lord Jesus. Let's lift our hands. Let's tilt our heads to the heavens and offer him some praise. Amen. Oh, 
on the road marked with suffering though there's pain in the offering blessed be your name and every blessing you pour out i'll turn back to praise when the darkness flows
the center is all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heaven jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all Amen. Let's all stand together. Praise God. We're looking forward, amen, to the word of the Lord tonight. And uh, I'm asking Brother Micah for him to come. And we appreciate what God is doing in his life and in his family's life. And uh, we want you to come and share with us what God has put in your heart uh, for, this, for this service tonight. Come on, Brother Micah. Everybody say God bless Brother Micah. Thank you, sir. Pastor, I just wanted to let you know that as far as Saturday is concerned, my Andrew will take care of that for me. And I ain't going to have to touch no clock. Oh, here you go in the back. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No more jokes before the service. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> God bless y'all. So, we were singing um, Jesus Be the Center, right? And one of the lyrics went um, from my heart to the heavens. Um, Jesus Be the Center, right? And I was thinking, like, and Pastor, you were talking about, um, you know, keep your eye on Israel. Things are happening. Rapture's on the way. And from the beginning, God created human beings to worship him, to glorify him, to magnify his name. 
but because of the serpent, sin entered the world, and we've been dealing with that ever since. And so, ever since the dawn of creation of humans, God has always wanted our pure worship. He always wanted our heart. And so, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus, every day, may you be the center of my life. When I mess up, when I do the wrong things, I know that he's always going to be there. So I don't have to worry. Just like the rest of you, y'all don't have to worry about nothing if you keep Jesus at the center of your heart. Amen. Just want to say that. But let's get to the word of the Lord today, or tonight, excuse me. It's uh, Genesis 6, starting with verse 1 in the King James. Hallelujah. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men and that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit should not always strive with man for that he is also flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. You know, in the beginning, people were living six, seven, eight hundred years. And so God is just looking at the earth and just like, man, we got to cut this short <laughs> with everything that's going on. Verse four, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. In the NLT, if I'm correct, it says that it made the Lord sorry that he ever made man and that it broke his heart. Have you ever felt deep regret over a choice that you made? Perhaps, man, perhaps you've looked back on a moment and thought, what was I thinking? Now, imagine if you were the creator Gazing down upon a creation that repeatedly chose to turn away from you. This is the heart-wrenching reality we encounter in Genesis 6, 1 through 6, where we see the depth of God's love and pain of his heart. The title of tonight's message is, His Broken Heart. Let's go to prayer real quick. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we come to you in your mighty name tonight, and I pray that the word is I pray that the word that's given tonight is impactful on the people here. In Jesus' name, let your heart be heard tonight. In Jesus' name, let the souls feel what you gotta. Let the let the souls feel what you have for them tonight. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Everybody may be seated. Thank you. Ooh, boy. I try not to, but you know what happens. I think it's my 11th message. I can't go without one tear. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. In the beginning, God created humanity with pure intentions, right? Genesis tells us that he desired a loving relationship with us, one built on trust and obedience. Yet when sin entered the world through the deception of the serpent, as I was talking about earlier, everything changed. Adam and Eve's choice to disobey God brought corruption and shame, leading to a world that spiraled into wickedness. 
Fast forward to Genesis 6, as we started with, and we see a grim picture. The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth, and he saw that everything that they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. That's the NLT version of Genesis 6 and 5. As God surveyed the earth, his heart broke. It is striking to think that the creator of the universe felt sorrow over his creation. In Genesis 6 and 6, we read, So the Lord was sorry he ever made them, and it broke his heart. Did God make a mistake? No. He is all-knowing, all-seeing, and all-powerful. He granted humanity free will, understanding the risk that came with it. But God longs a genuine relationship founded on love, not forced obedience. Some people would say a robot. Now, in the midst of this darkness, one man stood out, and that was Noah. Genesis 6 and 8 tells us, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was a righteous man, walking with God in a world filled with corruption. Despite the chaos around him, he remained, he remained faithful. God chose Noah to carry out a monumental task, building an ark to save humanity and the animals from impending judgment. Genesis 7, <clears throat> starting with verse 1, going to 6 in King James, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all, the, and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female, of fowls also by the air of sevens, the male and the female, to keep the seed alive upon the face of the earth, all the earth. For yet seven days I, was called, I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made will I, would, I, would, I, will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of the waters was upon the earth. And one question came to mind regarding Noah was the flood, or regarding Noah and the flood was, I had wondered if Noah had warned the people of the coming flood as I couldn't find a scripture that exactly said God commanded Noah to do such and such. But this is what I did find. Hebrews 11 and 7 in the King James. By, no, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. 2 Peter 2 and 5 in the NLT is not here, but I'll read it to you. And God did not spare the ancient world except for Noah and the seven others in his family. Noah warned the world of God's righteous judgment. So God protected Noah when he destroyed the world of ungodly people with a vast flood. So God would not allow the world to be destroyed without warning everyone to repent and be saved from the judgment to come. He's been doing this since we've all been alive, so you know he's been doing this since way back then. Hallelujah. God is long-suffering. The scripture says that he waited patiently in the days of Noah while Noah was building the ark. Now, if God wanted to hurry up with the destruction of the earth, he would have built the ark all by himself. Probably took him about an hour, for all we know. And told his family to hop on, get all the animals of the beasts of the field and the air, and just get ready because the flood is coming. Amen. He let Noah build the ark to give humanity enough time to come to repentance. Wow. On top of that, on top of that, you got this man building this huge vessel out in the open, and you mean to tell me ain't nobody going to wonder what the heck is he doing out here building this huge boat? Amen. People are going to get curious. Like, for example, I can walk through that door right now with a pan of fried chicken. Y'all going to wonder who's the chicken for. All right. Ain't that right, brother? <laughs> Y'all going to wonder who's it for. And Noah being the preacher of righteousness, preaching the word to hundreds of people, I highly doubt that he will remain silent. Yeah. 
If God is long-suffering and wants his people to have a chance to be saved, then Christ's followers or believers should preach that same belief. Amen. Amen. Now, imagine the, imagine the ridicule that Noah went through during this time as he was building this massive vessel. And he was building this vessel in a, in a time where rain was a foreign concept. It hadn't rained just yet. So imagine the disbelief and the mockery he received from his community, the people that were looking. The ark itself could be seen as a symbol of salvation and hope. It represents the idea that faith can lead to protection and deliverance, even when the world around you does not understand or support you. Yet, despite the negativity that he received, he persevered, driven by faith and obedience. It encourages resilience and faith, reminding us that sometimes being true to one's beliefs may involve standing alone. Boy, let's talk about sin real fast. Now, sin. Sin is what separates us from God, right? In 1 John 3 and 4, we learn that sin is lawlessness, all right? It is a conscious choice to defy God's will. In other words, it is rebellion. We all fall short of his glorious standard. You can read that in Romans 3 and 23. Now, the struggle is real, folks. We often find ourselves torn between our desires and God's commands. Romans 7 and 15 captures this eternal, internal conflict. I really don't understand myself. For I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Yet, in this struggle, we have hope. Isaiah 53, starting in verse 4. This is in the NLT. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was, led, he was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one, carried, no one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He has done no wrong and, have, and had never deceived anyone, but was buried like a criminal. And when I read that scripture, I thought about uh, this past Sunday with Brother Greg Godwin, and he was going over Jesus' death and how he detailed it, the, the, the imagery, the picture that he painted, going up with the cross, being nailed on the cross after he died. The one part that really got me was when he said they threw the spear at him right here, and it stuck. And they pulled it out, and the blood and the water came out. Somebody that could be that innocent can die for us in such a way, and we don't deserve it. There's nothing about. I tell you, man, we don't deserve what the Lord does for us, with the way we treated him. We were the ones that chose to sin. And all this time, the Lord continued to be there for us. Yet we continued to be for ourselves. And sometimes, and the Lord knows, I didn't ask him, Lord, I don't even know how you deal with us. I don't even know how you deal with me. As much time as I, you know, Yolanda, as you would say, flip-flop. <laughs> <laughs> going back and forth, being consistent one minute, being inconsistent the other minute, trying to get it together. But it feels like a lot of times I just tried to get it together on my own. And a lot of times, or all the time, that's where I mess up. 
And I think a lot of you guys feel the same way when I say that. But he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice, took on the weight of of our failures, offering us grace and redemption. The cross is a testament to God's enduring love, even when we stray. And I can't thank the Lord enough for always looking out for me when I don't deserve it. Even down to the stuff where it's like, you just driving to get here. Out of all, all the accidents he done saved you from. Eating all them bad foods and all the, 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 all the uh, what, what, what can you say? All that fried chicken that y'all was eating and it missed all the little arteries it could have made so it could digest so you could stay alive. Amen. Amen. How much does he look out for us yet we don't show him no love? God then gave us chance after chance so when are we going to return the favor? Boy. It makes me think I think I said this in the beginning. It's like, what have I been doing this whole time? What have we all been doing this whole time? As Pastor said, but the election's coming up, and that election might decide some things for us. But always keep our eyes on Israel because that'll let us know where we're at. But we already know that we're in the last days. These are the end times. So what are we doing to prepare ourselves for the Lord's return? Boy. Oh, man. Hallelujah. Let us stand. Come on. Let us stand. Come on. Hallelujah, Jesus' name. We praise your name. We thank you for who you are today. We magnify your holy name. We bless your holy name today. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for you, where would we be at this time, Jesus? How many times are we going to keep doing our own thing and break your heart? He was rude. For our iniquity. As we reflect on the state of the world today, much like in the days of Noah, we must ask ourselves, are we living in obedience to God's call? Are we allowing sin to hold us captive? The invitation is clear. God longs for a relationship with us. He waits patiently for us to turn back to him. The message that we heard on Sunday in regards to Jesus' death is a wake-up call to how much our Lord truly loves us and how much it causes him grief or heartache that many of us would choose the world and its struggles, struggles over him who already overcame it all. Boy. So, he was for if, if you if you find yourself feeling distant from God, burdened by sin, or caught in rebellion, I encourage you to respond tonight. This altar is open for repentance. Take your time and repent tonight. 
God desires to heal your brokenness and restore your relationship with him. Remember, no matter how far you feel you have strayed, his love is greater and his grace is sufficient. And if you can remember that tonight in your time of prayer, in the time that you... <laughs> Oh, he was rude. If you can remember that in your time of prayer, I, when you lay it all down at the altar tonight, I promise you, when you leave this building, you will feel blessed and you will feel renewed. Surely he bore Give your heart to God right now at this altar and watch your life be changed in Jesus' name. And by his stripes we are yours. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity oh and surely he Thank you.